Hey everybody, it's Gurger Time. Thank you for joining me for another episode of AEW New Era, our challenge save where we're trying to maintain the momentum, try to keep ourselves from not getting fired, try and keep ourselves from bad booking decisions, and boy are we failing at that. Even though I think overall, uh, a good change, a good interesting wrinkle was Andrade getting the championship. I'm very happy about that. Unfortunately, we have some other objectives that we need to co uh, complete here. We have to have Fuego win a feud, which we've had him in a feud with MJF now. Uh, so Fuego may have to go over MJF. Um, we need to take a woman, uh, a female wrestler, and book them into becoming a star, which we currently have no female stars and we need to take a new wrestler and do so uh so that's that's an interesting proposition because currently there are none right um unimportant recognizable is athena we, we've changed her back from ember moon to athena uh brandy recognizable well known which is a, a step up the next step up from from recognizable is a well known Recognizable, well known, unimportant, unimportant, recognizable, recognizable, unimportant. Uh, we have Lena, aka Nia Jax, uh, Lena Fanini, Fanini, Fanini. I'm gonna say Fanini, but Lena, uh, the former Nia Jax, is here, who has the closest shot and is going to be the one that we're gonna push. Unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> Do a great oh boy I'm, I'm afraid to look at her stats for her safety rating but um get out of the way uh um <laughs> we're gonna book her and uh she is we need to move her to be a powerhouse to be our star she's at 52 by far i believe our most popular female wrestler Britt Baker's at a 48. CJ Perry, despite not really being used at all on our show, other than one gimmick like a, a year ago, um, at a 49. Everybody else way far away, right? Um, Athena only at a 38. 42 for Sheeta. Yeah. So the closest we can get, truthfully, to becoming star maybe just a few matches which is what we need because unfortunately we only have a little bit of time we have a couple weeks to complete that objective or else we lose points we have winter is coming thank you guys in the comments by the way for clearing up how to get the events and the um specifically the, the shows to work out there was a setting to go in here and do show priority based on, on descending or ascending based on the name. So uh, that's settled, and it looks like it'll work. Uh, tonight, it doesn't matter because we're doing an event first because we're, we're doing Winter is Coming and then uh, Rampage. But I think we're going to do that. We're going to mix them together. It's a little bit easier to book. I think it's a little bit more realistic to how they have their shows. So there's not like this stretch of two days where things can happen, things can get signed, you know, changes can happen, injuries can take hold. Um, it, it, it's just that night, right? Uh, I think that works out perfectly. We'll, we'll see how it, how it feels when we book it, um, but certainly it, it feels like it, it's going to be the, the the right move in terms of a of, of how it should look, right? So I'm happy with that. Um, what I'm not happy with is, well, two things. One, we lost our bit to Nakamura. We knew it was going to happen. We knew it. But it's a bummer. Uh, also, Billy Gunn got divorced. I'm bummed about, about that, too. Um, but now the ass man can return with his ass boys and, and run, run, run the street however they want. Uh, um, so if you watch the Dark episode, we, we know we have a definitely um, 
a problem within our women's division of, of a very, very weak undercard. So uh, as much as, as, you know, as Nia Jax is maligned, I think she's going to have a good um, place here of, of being somebody that could potentially uh, take and dethrone Britt Baker. We felt that Thunder Rosa was not quite ready for it, so we called an audible for it. We would love to build Chris Statlander up, but she has a long way to go. Uh, Nia Rose actually has some fantastic stats, so she's someone that we could build up over time, but she's not there yet in terms of popularity. Um, and she might be one of those ones that we were, we were talking about. If you guys are interested in seeing more of Dark Elevation, I'm thinking of maybe putting a few story, very, very basic storylines. I'm talking like more basic than we've ever booked on, on this show or any of my shows, right? Just very like A to B because I believe, and, and someone that knows the game's mechanics may know it a little bit better than me, I believe successful storylines do a lot in terms of boosting popularity, right? Like the two things that popularity is boosted by is typically, well, three, good matches, wins, well, I guess more than three, but good matches and then wins in matches, right? And it's specifically winning in matches of people above your station. So if you're unrecognizable, but you beat someone that's recognizable, and it's a good match. It's a uh, you'll get a higher boost of popularity if you've if a lot of people have seen it, right? Because it's like, oh wow, I you know this guy beat Dolph Ziggler. Holy crap! Who is this person, right? Um, versus if you just beat a jobber, it's not it's it's not as effective, you know. Um, at least as as far as I understand it. Being in angles, successful angles, with more popular people, as long as they're long angles and they're important angles, can be uh, beneficial. So, you know, the the idea of if you put Jamie Hayter in an angle with Britt Baker all the time and they're successful angles, people will start to get posit- more positive on Jamie Hayter because of her association with Britt Baker. Uh, that's the theory, right? in the game and the other way is i believe having successful storylines end that are hot that are that are, are uh, you know not dead poor storylines but they're they end up being hot storylines and i think that's a way that you can also help build up their popularity now um we're a little limited when it comes to elevation and I, I believe Elevation is on YouTube. Did, did we get... Did, oh, we probably did. Um, I probably just passed it. Did we see how many people... We had 554 in attendance. We had 2,000 viewers. So not bad, actually. That's not too bad. Because you're also going to be limited in how many people see that person, right? So, so that that can be a problem too, um, but eh, you know, it, it's it's something that will be a slow and steady burn to build up some of these people to get them ready to, to rotate in. The other thing I was thinking about before we get started on the show, and I kind of want to hear your guys' thoughts, is now that we got a bit of a handle on the game, one of the things we did a little early, and I still I'm still a little shaky on, to be honest, I'm still not a hundred percent feeling great about it is uh where is it we removed i believe it's in preferences okay so there's a lot of settings if you've never played the game where you don't really play that much of it there's a lot of different settings that can be turned on and off uh some of them have have you know enable small roster penalty basically you can kind of change the game how you want to i like to keep almost everything on um, the one thing I kept off was enable left off show complaints because we were having such an issue with it. I still feel a little gross about changing it, to be honest. And now that we have a 
a, a dark company, right? We have we have the, our developmental that we can send a lot of people down to more than we have currently. I wonder if we should bring it back at an extra level of challenge. I still feel a little gross, to be honest, to get getting rid of it. I feel like I'm cheating a little bit because part of the game is balancing those elements. Obviously, we have a lot to balance in this save, but it feels wrong to get rid of it. So I'm going to leave my fate upon you, dear viewers. Do we bring back the, the penalty for being left off of important shows? What does that mean? Well, that, that, that means we might do some more pre-shows to try to balance it. We try to add more people into angles, but we have to just be a little bit more aware. And then, then we move people back and forth between um, between the shows, right? Between uh, dark and stuff like that. And when we start to move some more people down to developmental, we'll kind of make it manageable. Because we have 93 wrestlers <laughs> on here, but... Um, there's a lot that we can send when we're not using them down the developmental. Like, like honestly, now that the Dark Order storyline's kind of done, um, and and maybe we we shift it and we don't have to have Ten and Alan Angels and Colt Cabana. We could send them down the dark for a bit um, to help people out, you know, and. Because maybe we don't want to do anything with them. Maybe we want to do something separate with Emmett Koresh. It's not involving the, the the Dark Order anymore. Maybe they just become part of the, the sidelines, right? Matt Lee, Jeff Parker, um, or Max Caster, uh, Anthony Bowens. If we don't have a specific storyline we want to do with them, we can move them back. Powerhouse Hobbs. There's a lot of people that we're just not using right now that we might want to move you know, it's a little admin over to the show, manage with a smaller roster, rotate people in and out, let them kind of get booked and get developed over there. Currently, that child company does have uh, its own broadcasting. It's broadcasting on YouTube, so it is getting some um, show momentum. I think it has its own titles. They're doing weird crap over there in the dark land. They got a number one contendership title. They got a female that's interesting. I never thought about doing that as having a number one contender title as an actual called out title is, is kind of an interesting idea. Um, can I edit that? Let me see what that is. That's interesting. As a, as a secondary title. That's, that, that's weird. <laughs> that's a weird way to do it, but sure. Uh, and their main title, I, I assume, is their international title. Um, which is Joey Janela, our international AW Dark champion. Leva Bates is our female champion. Our tag champions are Dante Martin and Mike Seidel. Uh, and Serpenico is our number one contender. Uh, we should look at what's going on down there more often. <laughs> See what the hell they're doing down there. What are you guys doing? What 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 is going on down here? What what are you, what are you, what are you guys doing? Do you have any stables? No. Okay. You guys are being weird down there. Um, so, you know, there's... <laughs> there's a lot of weird stuff going down on that show. Um, we, but they have an audience. We can bring them down. We can do stuff with them, right? That's kind of my point. Um, so let me know. Let me know what you guys think. And if that's something that, that is a, a potential here that we should do. All right. Let's get on to Winter is Coming. We're going to have, I think, a Battle Royal with all of our women to debut uh, Lena, a.k.a. Nia Jax, and um, build a storyline with that. That's going to be our, our one of our major focuses. Uh, prior to that, what did we have happen in our show last week? I don't even remember. Um, we have Cole and Omega are going to be fighting. Um, Fuego and MJF are continuing their feud, uh, building up a little animosity between Wardlow and MJF after... Uh, 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 disconnect in, in the, the thing. Um, we have a feud between Dustin and Cody that we were forced to do that we have to kind of continue to build. And um, we have a bit of a rivalry between Britt Baker and Serena Deeb, which was kind of interesting. And uh, uh, Hangman's kind of left hanging 
uh, after that audible with title change. So we got a bit of storylines that we got to kind of not necessarily conclude in Winter is Coming, but we definitely have to touch on. What's our medical look like is another great question. Uh, Adam Cole still... Oh, right. Adam Cole got <laughs> a broken jaw. Uh, still can be worked through, so he's fine, but that, that's right. That was an uh, injury. Ray Phoenix is still out for seven more days, so we can't have a tag championship. I probably should have vacated it, but I just didn't want to because uh, I would have liked it to be in Winter is Coming. If I looked at this, I might have pushed it back one more day uh, to have them you know, fight. Uh, poor Trent is still out for four months. Sean Spears also out for another seven days. So let's go ahead. Let's get to Winter is Coming. Let's get to Rampage. Let's try to book this show and hopefully not lose any more chips. All right. We are here for Winter is Coming. Uh, we got a set of broadcasters, which should be just TNT, I believe. And I, I guess... I mean, who would do the... Can... Yeah, I don't think there's anybody else that we we have for international. Uh, so that's a problem, because we don't have anybody for the shows for international viewership. That's solely international. That's interesting. Um, that's fine. For now, we're good. Let's go ahead and do a motivational... Oh, we, we have to allow two months to pass for our next motivational speech. We have an incident involving Sting and Ethan Page. Uh, apparently, Ethan Page is brought before wrestler's court and accused of being absorbed by his phone. Not a big deal. Uh, that's the only incident, which is good. We will continue to open forum and just let people vent. And where are we going to be? Uh, I'm fine with being in the southeast. That is our home area. I think winter is coming as a, a smart one for it. We're going to have 18,000 fans here. What is um, Daly's place capacity? A lot less. So pick the best option. That's fine. And we have any absent workers, just our injuries. So nobody do we have to worry about in terms of rebooking. And we have a show, regular two-hour show, uh, just a special. So should be easy enough to book. Um, we may want to book a pre-show just to, to, to boost that up a little bit. Maybe get a, a work-to-crowd match in the pre-show uh, to help us out. Typically, they do... For these specials, do do a, a YouTube pre-show, so I, don't, I think that's justified. Uh, we need, we did have an update on our rating. I don't think our rating has changed in our average for events or dynamite. I think it's still sixty-five. I want to say, but our rampage did go up, so it's going to be a little bit harder to book a successful rampage. Uh, Dynamite's been holding about steady. I average out every 10 so that because otherwise it gets a little too homogenous. Um, so I take the, the top, the I should probably do top 10, might be a little bit more challenging. But right now I'm doing the most recent 10. Uh, so every 10 episodes or so, we update the, the number and kind of rotate it out so that it updates. So Rampage is going to be a little bit harder. But for now, Winter is Coming shouldn't be too difficult to book in terms of getting that momentum. But we'll see. All right, I'll catch you guys on the flip. All right, guys, we went a little long with this one, uh, but we do have that advantage with the events. But so some of the things I wanted to do got pushed onto the next rampage, which will be fine because this is really not really an event. It's it's like a super show, right? So we have some big events, big moments that happen on this show, uh, some really cool stuff. But uh, the biggest match didn't get on here, and instead it's going to go on. Rampage, which is kind of weird, but maybe it'll help our <laughs> Rampage. All right, let's go ahead and let's start the show and see what Winter is Coming has in store for us. Uh, in the pre-show on YouTube, we start off with Alex Reynolds and John Silver versus Private Party. 
and Butcher and the Blade in a uh, triple threat tag match. It's a decent pre-show match. It's a work to crowd match. Alex Reynolds and John Silver defeat Private Party and Butcher and Blade. In 12 minutes, John Silver pins Mark Quinn with an enziguri. Um, John Silver heads and shoulders above everybody else. At a 63, definitely the standout of this group. Gets a 57, got a lot of chemistry bonuses, all that fun stuff. Um, John Silver having a benefit of a groundswell of public support. Very good. Uh, in a weird pre-show match, which we just gave away on YouTube, a exhibition match between Brian Danielson and Eddie Kingston uh, is fantastic, as we would expect. Brian Danielson does defeat Eddie Kingston's submission in 11 minutes. And in our save, Brian Danielson also is not heel, but at least not yet. Um, in the real world, he went super heel real fast. Instead, we're kind of doing an inverse, where we're going to have CM Punk go heel. So, kind of interesting. This is just sort of a friendly exhibition match on Dynamite or on the pre-show of Dynamite, it could bleed into something else, but right now it was just sort of to give them something to do uh, and put on a good show. We start to show off with our Women's Casino Battle Royal. Um, we have in it a lot of people. Anna J, Athena, Cassie Lee, CJ Perry. I've not, I don't know if she's making her actual in-ring debut, but we put her in there. Dakar Rashida, Jake Cargill, Jesse McKay, Chris Statlander, Kylie Ray, uh, the debuting Nia Jax, aka Lena Fanini, 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 uh, Maki Ito, Mia Yim as a uh, maybe not a debut, but you know uh, at least a, a guest appearance. Probably going to keep her around. I'll have to, we'll have to see how she does in ring solo. Uh, Ruby Soho. Speaking of which, Ty Conti, Riho, Penelope Ford, the Bunny, Thunder, basically everybody. Everybody was in this damn match. Uh, it's actually had a decent reaction from the crowd. Got subpar wrestling in it, though. Lena Fanini won the Casino Battle Royal in 17 minutes. The final four were Kylie Ray, Athena, and Jade Cargill. Kylie Ray being the final elimination, giving her a little bit of a rub there. And Athena setting the record for surviving the longest. Um, so, a lot of people off their game, unfortunately. Lena, um, in poor form, as you expect. She got initial rating of very good for her monster, female monster gimmick. Um, and we start her debut as well as advance the Maki's Hit Squad storyline, which we've been kind of um, slowly burning. Yes, I do want to change Athena's gimmick. We're going to change it into um sort of a mysterious enigma character. Uh, it got a rating of awful. It did even worse than her previous one. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, afterwards, Lena celebrating becoming number one contender, uh, sees Kylie Ray getting back up and decides to pick on the little girl and attack her, lays her out, and that leads to Kylie's former tag partner, very short-lived uh, storyline. Uh, Ruby coming out to try to make the save and uh, squares off on Lena for Lena just laughs at her and walks away. Ruby Soho uh, tending to Kylie Ray, kind of building up a bit of a feud between the two of them. Uh, we're going to feed Ruby to Lena very quickly, and hopefully that um, that helps boost Lena with a big win. Uh, Ruby is, I think, recognizable, not well-known, but we want to move, obviously, Lena into um, a contendership match with Britt Baker, so having a quick feud with Ruby Soho should get us, hopefully, to where we need her to be. We don't have a lot of time, so this, we're on a big crunch on this one. Uh, we got a promo with Britt Baker, uh, Jamie Hayter, and Rebel both hanging out there. And uh, in this one, it's not much really happening other than Britt Baker talking trash about her match with Serena, Serena Deep for the NWA, or oh, NWA, geez, uh, the AEW Women's Championship. Um, uh, Serena Deep, of course, being the former NWA uh, Women's Champion. So uh, that had come into play in the story a little bit. 
Printmaker's not concerned, she says, about her at all. Um, just overall, it's pretty okay. It's a 54. What does much better is this familiar um, little beat here, where we got the entire La Familia coming out to the ring draped in gold, our champion Andrade, Pentagon of Phoenix holding up both of their dual belts. So is Andrade, because he's also AAA champion at this point. Uh, Andrade um, hanging out with Roosh, who's our TNT champion. Um, he talks him up about his first challenge for the title here on the night. He says Roosh has been proven to be unstoppable, um, and this title proves it. But the powers of B have determined that there must be a T there, there were going there were sorry, there was going to be a TNT title match tonight to be challenged, uh to have a challenge for it. It was open to anyone in the locker room and no one stepped up. Everyone's afraid of Roosh, and uh they know their limits. They know that Roosh is the pe a pedigree beyond all of them. So unfortunately for everyone, they must announce that the TNT match that was planned for tonight will be canceled um, for a later date. Um, before the crowd can really even boo or react, Andrade turns as uh, unfamiliar music hits and a figure emerges from the entryway, entryway. While there may not be somebody from the locker room, apparently somebody is interested in taking up the challenge. Uh, this segment gets a 64. It's pretty hot. gets the crowd hotter here. And we see emerging from the entranceway to face the challenge. Keith Lee, off of his, uh, his being let go of, a, of WWE, debuts in AEW to take on an open challenge for the TNT title. Uh, this segment in debut gets a 67. And we have a really great match. Uh, Keith Lee versus Roosh. It's 11 minutes with a 72 uh, Roosh loses and Keith Lee defeats him uh, with a spirit bomb and wins the TNT title uh, a big debut, two big, big debuts tonight uh, in, in a pretty big way, this got the crowd buzzing and Keith Lee is our new TNT champion, uh, this gets a 72 we have a match with Fuego versus MJF in this back and forth between them. Fuego uh, is defeated by MJF in 13 minutes by pinfall uh, after interference by Wardlow. Once again, Wardlow coming into play in this feud. Uh, this That was pretty good, 59. Fuego has a 46. MJF has a 59. And uh, we advance the storyline of Juegos, not better than you. Afterwards, MJF um, stands over Fuego after he has lost in the match, uh, getting cheap shotted by Wardlow. MJF gloats, standing over Fuego, screaming, you are nothing to him. He turns away to walk out of the ring as his music plays, and he stops and kind of slowly turns around, it turns his head around as he senses movement behind him. Fuego shakingly gets up, his feet ready to buckle, his head wobbling, uh, and in defiance, he puts his hands up and does that kind of come and get me, I could do this all day type motion as he kind of shakingly gets his fists up. MJF turns around to take a swing at Fuego, but Fuego, despite being shaky, counters the swing and kind of does a little sweep around his body to lead into a uh, Tornado DDT. It makes MJF go flying across the ring a little bit and stumble. Uh, he stumbles onto his ass and scoots away towards the corner of the ring as he looks at Fuego in shock that he still had that much energy in him. Uh, clearly, this is not over. Fuego did lose, but he lost her interference, and we're still building up a Fuego, uh, a big Fuego win here. Uh, Fuego st struggled in this acting segment because he was fought, wasn't following the script, so that hurt us here. But overall, gets a fifty and continue the storyline here with us. We have Cody and Dustin versus FTR, and a pretty decent match. It's fifty-five. It's not too bad. Uh, Dustin had a fifty-four. Cody had sixty-two. Dash and Dax had a, or Cash and Dax had a 
64, 65, about even. Lost Heat for the AEWs for real tag teams story and advance our story for the roads to the bottom. Uh, in, in this match, FTR defeat Cody and Dustin in 18 minutes. Uh, Cash pins Dustin with a big rig. A uh, lot of bonuses going on here on the sides. Um, Cody, poor form. We still have this confusing Arn Anderson thing, which will end pretty soon. Uh, and it was poorly paced. The crowd was a little too rowdy for a more technical match, which penalized us here. Afterwards, Cody has a breakdown, snaps, and attacks Dustin with a chair. You know, he wasn't happy with tagging with him before. Not happy now. Uh, he attacks Dustin's leg with a chair, uh, attacks him with a belt. Uh, Arn Anderson comes out from the ring to try to stop him. And like, what the hell is going on with you, Cody? And he turns on Arn Anderson, gives him a crossroads, lays out the old man on the ground. Brandy comes to the ringside. He's like, what the hell is wrong with you? Uh, and Cody actually pushes her away hard enough for her to fall off the apron, uh, giving to a crowd a, a sea of booze. And he walks away onto the ring, uh, off to the ramp. And while he turns around on the rampway, he listens, seething at the crowd's mix of boos and cheers. The odd thing is, is that he's being cheered louder at this point. And he stares down at his injured brother from the rampway. And I said, punished Cody is here. Uh, what are we here for? We're just made to suffer. Uh, <laughs> our, our big boss, Cody Rhodes, has appeared. Uh, going full heel and looking seething and angry and vicious as we build up this feud between Dustin and him that we need to do. Unfortunately, we lose heat for it for this segment. Uh, I think I have probably had more to do with Arn and Brandy being involved, unfortunately, but we'll hopefully have to try to reclaim it a little bit. And then we got Britt Baker versus Serena Deeb. Um, it's a pretty good match. 58. It's not too bad. Britt Baker does defeat Serena D in 14 minutes, maintain, re, retaining the title, makes defense number five of the women's world title. About, they're about evenly matched in their skill set here. Britt actually seeming a little bit off her game. Got the crowd hotter. We have an angle with Hangman Page where he says that he is, is number one contender and he is going to issue the challenge. And he wasn't going to challenge it here. Instead, he wants it on Rampage. Uh, this segment does very well. The crowd's very big on this. Uh, so we are announced that Hangman Page will face Andrade in the main event for Rampage for the AEW title. And in our main event, we have a grudge match between Adam Cole and Kenny Omega. Adam Cole has stolen the Elite. Um, and thus, we have this match. Basically, it also helped him lose the title. Because uh, Kenny did not lose the belt clean. Uh, it's a superb max match, even though it ends up only being a 62. Uh, Adam Cole was slowed severely by his injury. And thus, we, we definitely lose a lot in this. I'm sure if we look at our dirt sheet, there's probably a lot of penalties here for this match. Um, working injured, definitely. Odd face heel combination was penalized. And... Uh, uh, the crowd was already at an emotional high, so we kind of burnt them out a little bit. But overall, still a good match. Adam Cole defeats Kenny Omega by pinfall after Kenny Omega is turned on by Don Callis. Uh, so Kenny's world is shattering around him. We have some changes to turn. We are doing a double turn here. Don Callis turns... Ultra heel, and uh, Kenny Omega turns a, a tweener, let's say. Um, we have suffered a penalty. It did not go particularly well. Uh, too many shock turns, apparently, uh, for us. But Kenny turns roughly face here. Uh, afterwards, Don Callis holds up and lifts up Adam Cole's hand. Uh, truly being the human filth that he is, has betrayed Kenny Omega. Everybody has left Kenny Omega, uh, leaving him on the side as, as still a heel, but more sympathetic. I, I wish we still had a tweener option in the save in this game, but we really don't because he's not really face, but he's definitely uh, not 
as evil anymore. He's getting humbled, right? Um, Kenny was doing a great job acting in this segment. It's a 74 to end the show. We need a 65. And we get it. Unfortunately, though, exact 65 is not what we need. Uh, um, we need a 66 or higher. So we do lose one chip, unfortunately. We, it's not the end of the world, uh, but it definitely hurts. We lose one ship down there. Um, that's a big bummer. And now it is time for Rampage right after it. Uh, same amount of people out. I believe is this pre-books the same lo a venue, I want to say. I'm not 100% sure, so I've never done this that way, but you already set your location for the night. So that's kind of cool. So that's another advantage is that we, we can kind of have it set at the same time. Um, but um, the one thing, it, it jumped ahead. I had to go back and look at my show history. That was kind of weird. But we do have our show for Rampage. We know that Hangman is going to be facing Andrade. Um, this would be, all be at the same night, so that's a hell of a... Uh, that's a hell of a card for them. So let's go ahead and put on our Rampage and finish our last hour here and see what comes out of it. And I'll catch you guys on the flip. All right, guys, finally we have Rampage. Uh, we have a big match tonight with Hangman versus Andrade for the title. Uh, Hangman's the number one contender, so we're going to do that. Uh, we have a CM Punk match. we got a bunch of stuff going on as we try to kind of build up uh, some of our storylines, we're just, uh, getting concerned about how quickly we have to run a few of these, but specifically the Fuego win and the uh, Lena feud. It's going to be really hard to boost both of these without losing chips, so let's hope we can do it. Uh, hopefully this show will help us there. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at what we got for Rampage. We start the show, actually does a lot poorer than I thought it would. Very interesting. Um, we got a promo by Cody Rhodes. He comes out to a mix of cheers and booze. He stands at the entrance ramp after exiting his private elevator ramp and cuts a promo, not on Dustin or Brandy or Arn or Malachi. He cuts it on the fans. And he says, you know... We all have weaknesses, and I have mine, and uh, I'm notoriously thin-skinned. I think it's well-known. I've, I've deleted my, my social media from time to time. I, I walk away from interviews when I shouldn't. You know, I, I know it. It's a, it's a personal problem, and uh, everybody else around me knows it, too. And it's been weaponized the last year. I couldn't really figure out why or how or who did it. Uh, at first, I thought it was maybe uh, Malachi trying to get under my skin. And every night kind of got me a little more and more. But no. I, I, I don't think it was him deliberately. I think, if anything, he was trying to show me truth. He says he wanted to reveal the true me to you all, but... I don't really think he did that. I think he really revealed the true you to me. The little group of pissant marks in the audience. Ones that scream and holler and boo all they want about me every time I'm here. These little guys that read Twitter as gospel and seek out new controversies to faux outrage about. They read some shit online from unknown sources, and all of a sudden, as they're coming to the show, they go, I hate Cody. He's booking himself over. He's a narcissist. He's the worst. They talk bad about me behind my back, and then when they get in line, they smile in my face, as I sign their autographs for them to resell online. Screw you. You don't know me. You don't know my struggles. You don't know who I am. I work all day 
with charities. I work all day in the back. I help run this company. I help build it up. I help everybody in it. All you want is some villain, some person that will have a reign of terror that you can hate for a brief second to distract you from your miserable lives. And the, the worst part is all these people that are now cheering me for my actions on Winter is Coming. Well, that they're the same people that were booing me the night before. Apparently, this is what they wanted in me. And if that's what you wanted, well, you're going to get it. You want a reign of terror? Yeah, you're going to get one. So Cody punished Cody, issuing a reign of terror from Cody Rhodes. An angry, vindictive Cody. One that was targeting Dustin, now targeting the fans. Uh, where that will go, we do not know. Got the crowd hotter, though. Even though his segment underperformed, in my opinion. I, I think he's, he's a better mic guy than that. But... Um, saying that we will we will soon have a Cody Rhodes reign of terror. We have a exhibition match with Lena versus Mia Yim. Uh, it's decent reaction from the crowd. Subpar wrestling. Uh, <laughs> that's a weird. Uh, entering performances are weird in this game sometimes. Uh, Lena defeats Mia Yim in ten minutes by submission. Uh, Lena had a fifty-one. Mia Yim had a thirty-seven. Feel like that's a strike that in reverse situation. Uh, Lena was penalized for due to being in extremely poor form. Uh, obviously, she's got a uh, tendency to botch, and it's still uh, hurting her here in the segment. Gets us a 44. <sighs> oh, man. What, what a bad segment here. Uh, Lena decides to attack her opponent after the match and refuses to let go of the submission that she won the match with. Uh, despite the refs trying to pry her off of it. Eventually she backs away, smiling smugly at the ref. Uh, Ruby Soho comes out to tend to Mia Yim um, before f squaring off with Lena, going, what's wrong with you? Lena kind of rolls her eyes at her and pushes her away with, uh, <laughs> in the face, just pushes her back, uh, begins to walk away. Ruby, pissed off at this point, uh, does a springboard before she leaves off the ropes onto her back. Starts trying to choke out Lena. Um, Lena grabs her from behind, and throws her down onto the ground, onto the ra onto the ramp, um, and starts to kick her and beat her up, and throws her to the side like a like a sack of potatoes, and then continues up the ramp to a sea of booze, building up that feud between Ruby Soho and her. Uh, loses heat for the storyline, unfortunately. Uh, boy, yeah, not 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 great segment here, unfortunately. Uh, that's in the wrong spot. <laughs> um, somehow that got in the wrong spot, but uh, CM Punk is about to have a match. Uh, we'll go back to that, but this segment gets gets a sixty eight anyways. Uh, there's a CM Punk match. CM Punk and Jake Hager. Uh, have an exhibition match. It's a quick nine-minute match. We have a submission with uh, Anaconda Vice. Uh, Punk wins. Has uh, an 82. Jake Hager has a 49. Gives us a 67 for the segment. And then, as you saw previously, as CM Punk was leaving the ring, we hit the entrance music for Hangman as a challenger for the next match, the main event. And the two of them pass each other. So CM Punk was kind of hanging around the fans a little bit longer than he should have. And they, they call him down. And the two pass like ships in the night. And Punk shoots lasers out of his eyes at uh, Hangman. Figuratively, not literally. Uh, that's important. <laughs> Don't think he has that ability yet. He's not cyberpunk. Uh, he is CM Punk. So um, CM Punk stares down at Hangman. He is clearly angry at the reaction to Hangman and how much the crowd loves him. Punk wants that love for himself, and we know that these two are going to go head-to-head -head at some point. But first, Hangman has to face his destiny. Can he become AEW champion in his match against Andrade? 
has his match with Andrade. It's a pretty good match. It's 58. Um, I think apparently they just don't click, unfortunately, and it shows in their performance. Um, had great heat, had decent wrestling. Hangman is not able to defeat Andrade. Uh, Andrade wins in 15 minutes. Uh, interference from Pentagon leads to Hangman losing. Uh, and then Andrade makes defense number one in the AEW world title. Uh, the numbers advantage that was that plagued the Hangman is still there. And he does not have the Dark Order at his side. They have broken up. Um, afterwards, Pentagon and Ray Phoenix start attacking Hangman after the match, which does lead lead to uh, his old tag team partners, John Silver and Alex Reynolds from the former Dark Order, do come back to Hangman's side to help him end up fending off uh, Pentagon and Ray Phoenix here, trying to uh, push them away. Uh, so he does have some help in his corner, but if he wants to take it from from uh, Andrade, he's going to have an uphill battle because he does have to face the family being there. Uh, hopefully, maybe John Silver and, and Alex Reynolds can help uh, stop some of that interference that cost him that match. We end the show with a 65 segment. Unfortunately, we need for this a 62 or higher. Our, our average is now 61. I don't think we got it here. I think we had some pretty weak show showings, unfortunately, on this rampage. So we're going to have to see. Uh, 58 is what we got. So that is lower. We do lose a one extra chip. Um, actually, we lose two extra chips for that. Very unfortunate. That is a rough way to start. Uh, we're about halfway down the chip pool there now. Ouch. Uh, we lose popularity in 11 regions. Very underwhelming show despite having some what should have been bangers uh, just we just don't hit it uh, don't know why but it does not happen a uh, very disappointing showing for our rampage post winter is coming we do have some mail um yuka sakasaki is a future star says brian danielson um john silver is a star, according to the Hangman page. Uh, Maki Ito is clumsy. Cut that kid loose, says Andrade. And we got a 1.24 for Winter is Coming. <sighs> That's a rough show. It's a rough show. Decent, though hardly spectacular, is definitely true. Um, though it sounds like people really dug Winter is Coming. <sighs> That's a rough... That was a highs and lows. Very rough there. What we do need to do though is we need to hopefully get get Lena to be a star by the end of the month um, can we do it I don't know I really don't know it it's scary I are we gonna have to give her a title shot is that what we're gonna need to do to get there uh, it's very possible but uh, a real highs and lows episode Thank you guys for hanging with me. Um, and we're, we're on for a rough ride for the, the month of December here um, as we continue through this game. But man, it's it's going to get rough. Uh, but let me know in the comments if we should make it rougher by bringing back the um, left off the show penalty. Make it a little more challenging as well. We really have to be thoughtful of how we implement our wrestlers. Uh, I'm curious to know how you guys feel about that. But that is it for me today. Thank you for enduring this long episode. And I'll see you next time.